Hello, my name is Tim Whitney. I work in the West Side Safety Department. And during this presentation, I will provide you with some information on properly completing a legal 10 hour break using two rest periods instead of the normal one rest period. Prior to discussing the manner in which to split the 10 hour break into two periods, I would like to quickly review the 11 hour driving rule and the 14 hour clock rule. The 11 hour driving rule states that following a rest period of 10 consecutive hours or more, you may not drive more than 11 hours. When you do accumulate 11 hours of driving time, the rule states that you cannot drive again until you've completed another 10 consecutive hour rest period. You must always err on the side of compliance and stop driving a few minutes early if necessary to avoid violating the 11 hour driving rule. If you begin driving immediately after completing the 10 hour rest period, there are cases in which the Qualcomm will not always compute the full 10 hours and a violation of the 11 hour driving rule may be noted. Therefore, Westside strongly recommends taking a 10 hour and three minute break rather than just the 10 hour break. In doing so, you'll be sure that the Qualcomm properly records the full 10 hours to assure compliance with the 11 hour driving rule. Due to a number of concerns, Westside has chosen not to use the off duty driving option that some companies choose to use. The 14 hour rule states that following a 10 consecutive hour rest period, if you accumulate 14 hours of clock time, you may not drive again until you've completed another rest period of at least 10 hours. If you complete a 10 hour rest period at 6 a.m. and begin a new work period with a pre-trip inspection or other activity, you may not drive after 8 p.m. that evening as that will be the end of your 14 hour clock. You can continue to perform work like fueling, pulling nails, post tripping, coupling and uncoupling after accumulating 14 hours of clock time, but the rule simply says you cannot go out on the road and drive until you've completed a 10 consecutive hour rest period. A couple of important reminders uh, regarding the 14 hour clock. There are many cases in which you will not be able to get your full 11 hours of driving time in during a 14 hour tour of duty. And also that the 14 hour clock is consecutive as it includes all on and off duty time. It is important to remember that the one and only way to totally reset your 11 hour driving clock and your 14 hour work period clock is to complete a 10 consecutive hour rest period. The 10 hour rest period can be completed in three ways and three ways only. It can be completed as off duty time while at home or in a hotel. It can be completed in a sleeper berth or it can be completed in a combination of sleeper berth and off duty. If the break is 10 consecutive hours or more, it can be split up any combination of off duty time and sleeper berth time. You must log all time spent in the sleeper berth as sleeper berth time on your logs and not as off duty time. Fear to do so is log falsification and can cause hours of service violations as well. There are certain situations in which you may consider another legal option in which to complete a 10 hour break. This process is called the sleeper berth option. An example of a situation that might cause you to consider using the sleeper berth option might be you're being advised that you can complete a 10 hour break at a customer's facility and after resting for eight hours in a sleeper berth, you are woken up by an employee of the customer and advised that the customer policy has changed and you must now leave the facility. If you have rested eight consecutive hours in the sleeper berth at that time you were woken and you also completed a two hour or longer rest period off duty in the sleeper or in a combination of off duty and sleeper berth earlier in the day, you should be able to legally drive and leave the customer without violating the hours of service regulations. 
you must know that if you logged eight hours in the sleeper birth, you must have spent the entire time in the sleeper birth and not in the truck stop eating or showering, not in the customer's dock or lounge, nor in a west side terminal. The full eight hour rest period must be spent in the sleeper berth to qualify as a eight hour break in the sleeper. Like the 10 hour break, Westside recommends logging an extra three minutes in the sleeper so the Qualcomm gives you full credit for the eight hour break, which is critical because it is the only way that you can legally use the sleeper berth option. When properly using the sleeper birth option, it's important that you understand that the time and the periods immediately before and immediately after each usable rest period, when added together, may not include any driving after 14 hours, and that the driving time in the periods immediately before and immediately after each usable rest period, when added together, does not exceed 11 hours. Even when using the sleeper birth option, you must still remain in compliance with the 11 and 14 hour rules. Simply stated, the 14 hour clock and the 11 hour driving clock will start at the end of your first usable rest period. One usable rest period is two hours or more in the sleeper birth, off duty, or a combination of sleeper birth and off duty. The other rest period must be eight consecutive hours resting in the sleeper berth. In this example, the driver after completing a 10 hour break at 12 a.m. midnight starts a new 14 hour clock and begins driving. At 4 a.m. the driver stops driving and rests in the sleeper for two hours. Since the first rest period is at least two hours, it will qualify as a usable break towards the sleeper berth option. This break could also be off-duty or a combination of sleeper and off-duty. Since a rest period is not eight hours in a sleeper berth, it counts against your 14-hour clock. The driver then drives another six hours until noon. The driver could have driven another hour for a total of 11 hours of driving had it been necessary, but he chose to stop at noon. At this time, the driver, due to the schedule, is considering using the sleeper berth option and splitting the 10 hour break into two rest periods. Since the first rest period from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. was not eight consecutive hours in the sleeper, the driver will need to go to the sleeper berth and rest for at least eight consecutive hours to complete the cycle. As stated earlier, when splitting the 10 hour break into two rest periods, the 11 hour driving clock is reset at the end of the first usable rest period, which in this example is at the end of the two hour break in the sleeper at 6 a.m. We also stated that the driving time in the periods before and after a usable rest period could not exceed 11 hours. So if the driver drove six hours from 6 a.m. until noon, 11 minus six equals five. So after completing the second rest period of eight hours in the sleeper, the driver cannot drive more than five hours. It is also important to understand that eight hours in the sleeper berth does not count towards the 14 hour clock, but the shorter rest period does count toward the 14 hour clock. After driving the additional five hours, the driver must now decide if they want to continue to use the sleeper berth option by completing another two hour or more rest period, after which the driver could drive another six hours, or if they want to complete a full 10 hour break and fully reset the 11 hour clock and the 14 hour clock. Westside recommends returning to the full 10 hour break if possible, rather than to continue using the sleeper berth option. As stated earlier, when using the sleeper berth option, the new 14 hour clock begins at the end of the first usable rest period and the time in the periods immediately before and immediately after a usable rest period when added together may not include any driving after 14 hours. In this example, the driver completed a 10 hour rest period at midnight and then drove four hours to 4 a.m. and then rested in the sleeper for eight consecutive hours. 
Following the eight hours in the sleeper berth, the driver drove for another six hours. The driver's new 14-hour clock begins at noon, which is the end of a usable rest break, and will expire 14 hours later at 2 a.m. the next morning. The driver then completes a two-hour rest period in the sleeper from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., which completes the 10-hour rest cycle. It is very important to understand that since the rest period from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. is not at least eight hours in the sleeper berth, it does count toward the 14-hour clock. So when the driver exits the sleeper berth at 8 p.m., the driver has only six hours remaining on the 14-hour clock. Since the driver has already driven six hours before the second usable rest period, in this case from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m., the driver can now drive up to five hours in the six available hours before 2 a.m. the next morning. In summary, we would like to offer some tips and reminders in successfully using the sleeper berth option. To qualify as a legal split break, one of the two rest periods must be two hours or more off-duty in the sleeper or a combination of off-duty and sleeper berth. The other rest period must be at least eight consecutive hours in the sleeper berth. The driver must spend the entire eight hours in the sleeper berth to be legal. The driver should always accumulate at least 10 hours and three minutes and two hours and three minutes for the rest period so that Paul Comp correctly records the required rest periods. The driver should advise Westside when using the sleeper berth option as it may affect your estimated time of arrival or your ETA to your consignee. Using the sleeper berth option can be very beneficial in many situations as it may prevent a driver from wasting an eight hour break in the sleeper berth, but it can also be confusing. Westside recommends using the sleeper berth option only on the electronic log as the Qualcomm will advise you as to the number of hours of drive time remaining at any given time in the cycle. If you are considering using the sleeper berth option while using a paper log and have any questions on the process, please contact the Westside Log Department at extension 166 or take a few minutes and review this training video again. Westside thanks you for running safely and in compliance with the hours of service regulations.